So we have got just one more day to go until Seven's World and Rushdoll comes to Duel Links, and we just got some big news via content creator previews via a Japanese video, showing some skills, the brand new main box, and new information about Seven's World, including a leak of a brand new bundle deal for Speed Duel, which is going to be for the Mark Stormforth, a very powerful spell card. It does seem we're getting some speed content on day one, but that might be it. You know, it might just be a little compensation. We're still going to support Speed Duel, and is this like the message you want to send? I, I'm not too sure. It's a cool card, but given you've got to open 10 packs in this box to get it, which would have been the Barry mini box, I can see people just holding off on this one completely right until the brand new main box comes out. So in terms of the brand new world, how do you unlock it? Well, you've either got to reach stage 10 or you can go to the shop, go to buy Rushdoll product, and immediately you can click a button to say, you know what, I want to skip that, unlock Rushdoll, that is really cool. Right, if a new player just wants to dive right into Rushdoll, they can do. If they want to go down the speed door route, unlock Vrain's world and DM world and Jack's world, they can do that as well. They've kind of got to eventually, but at least it gives them the option, which is what Konami wants, right? But then we have the brand new main box, new Sevens Road, and there's some really cool things happening here. First of all, there is 40 less packs in this main box than a normal speed door box, right? Normally you get 180, this one has 140. Secondly, we've got at least 9 URs, but it might be 10. And I say that because we've got 12 SRs, and normally in a main box, we have 11. And back in Duel Links, back in 2016 and 2017, old main box used to be 10 URs, and 12 SRs. So does this mean we're going back to that old format by having less packs in the box, which means your gems are now technically worth more in Rush Duel? That is a way of going about it. Now, the reason I think this as well is because we've seen some previews where the council stacked with cards from the box. They had six copies of each SR and three of each UR, and there were three URs in the, in the card catalog, right, that weren't confirmed yet. And so maybe those three will be the last three URs, at least two of them probably, and it might confirm a mystery secret character for day one. We'll talk about it. So the brand new box, of course, has Seven's Road Magician, your main boss for Yuga. You're gonna want three of this. Then we've got Dragias, who is going to be limit three on release, alongside Torna and alongside the Yamarula. Now, how do I feel about this? I think this is fine. I'd rather they do this day one, get it up front with right, rather than throw this on us in three months time and then wanna say, you know what, here's Dark Revelation, a limit three. They clearly are kind of worried about Dragoncaster and this, this shows it, right? The three best cards in Early Rush, and they're all in three. It does make sense. Then we've got Kreebot, P500, someone from the graveyard. Going to be really good in Early Rush, but not so great later on. We've got Dragonic Slayer, who will be pretty good day one, right? If you're level 7 on your field as a dragon, pop one back row, you point control. So now the big thing with this is, are we going to have worthwhile back row on day one? Because what we've seen so far is there's not really much back row. So maybe in Card Trader or Level Awards, we might get some more. Then, of course, we've got the Prima Katana, your Boss of Roman, and your, of course, Yamrula for Gavin, and then DMG, which kind of feels weird given, of course, the, uh, the Duel Links DMG, the Speed DMG, is a free card, this one being more necessary, right, for the skill to work. So, I'm gonna have to get three, aren't I? You know, it's gonna be a three run of the main box. Then, for super rares, there's a lot to like here. First of all, Grave Press Dragon, which I wasn't too fond of, but apparently it's pretty good, right? Send a card from out to Graveyard to weaken opponent's monster. That's going to be fine for the mid-game stages. Then we've got Dragonic Pressure, which is a really fun card. Send three dragons from the graveyard, nuke monsters on the field, and summon a dragon in from a graveyard in defense mode, which is going to be a really big power play, right? You want to time this really well to pop some big monsters, and hope your opponent on their turn doesn't use their five card draw to get into their big monsters as well. So this can come really clutch. Probably a two of in the deck, right? You don't want to play too many of this, right? Uh, it's still a very cool card, a very fun card. Then of course is Seven's Road Witch, which you want to play with your DM, with your Seven's Road, it cheats them out, very cool. Then we've got Spice the Elite Noodle Ninja. Now, this is Sabaraman's boss monster, right, who we know is going to be an NPC, and we now know that there's going to be a skill for this that won't be locked to a certain character, I believe. So that's going to be a really cool thing about Rush Duel, is there's going to be new skills potentially, where multiple characters can play them that aren't really on their archetype. It seems pretty fun, but I think we need more support for this deck for it to really shine. Then we've got Thunder the Thunder. Now, I wasn't too fond of this, right, when I first read it, right? Send a card to Wiki Poets Monster. It's not the best stat reduction, right? 300 probably won't make much of a difference, but maybe when you're actually playing this in the duel, that this will make sense. Now, if this was a mill from top of your deck, it'd be way better, but I think this is fine. Then there's a very cool card in full Meteor Impact. Now, this won't be that great. It's a bit too situational. You've got to have a 7 high spell caster on your field when you normally summon this. Send it to the graveyard to nuke almost your opponent controls at level 6 or higher, which could be really good, but also could be really bad for you, right? You do, 
Do you want to nuke their monsters or do you want to keep a body on board for next turn? That's the big kind of question. Then we've got Phantom Bind. This will be a staple. It's one of the only generic battle traps we've seen so far and uh, I think you're going to want to play this. Then we've got Kimarula, which is a very cool pseudo boss for the, uh, the Yamarula Warrior deck and it can attack your opponent directly if your opponent has no attachment monsters on their field, which is like, it's, it's again, it's a very niche scenario. We have got a skill that does work with this to put monsters in defense position, so maybe there's a chance this will work out, but I don't think you can kind of count on this effect going off all that often, so we'll see how it is. Then alongside it, we've got Umagumi, the ruler squad, which can reduce defense points of monster. I don't think the effect is that great for level 6, right? I'd rather play your Torna, but given it's limited 3, you can't play alongside the Yamrula, so the intention is to play this instead of this, which I guess is fine. Then we've got Folder Blitz. I like this card a lot. Burn your opponent. We've then got Berry Bassist, which is going to be some recursion for your Psychic deck, and also triggers a skill to search off your Lullabind or your Climax Finale, which is really, really cool. A cool interaction. I like it a lot. And finally for Super Rares, we've got the Hammer Crush. Send a card from Outer Graveyard, pop opponent's back row. This is just a, a great removal card, right? But again, if there's not that much good back row day one, this won't really matter that much. So there is a skill for it as well, which can be played by multiple characters, I assume. But overall, a fun looking box, right? And of course, we are getting Mystic Dealer in here, right? So it's not Structure Deck locked, which is really cool. We're getting a draw spell for Spellcasters, which this isn't the best card in the world, but it is our only real form of recursion right now. So Spellcasters getting some good stuff. We've got a Nandes, who is in Cross Duel. We've got Innocent Lancer, who can make himself a Piercing, which I think is good, given that Pierce is an Ultra Rare and might be in the box, we don't know. And yeah, Amusa Performer, Gazelle, some decent 1500 Tampa monsters. Now, we have also got a bundle deal for Summon Skull as a Legend, which is pretty cool. I'm, I'm down with that. And there's some more confirmed cards. Now, you'll notice here we've got Dying Keto, we've got the Rice Terra Secure, and we've got the Pierce. Now, all these three could be candidates for the last main box slots. All three of them could be in it, for we know, but at least two of them are probably in. Now, the big question is Dying Keto, because if you've seen Sevens, you will know this is a card used by Mimi, and this doesn't have an animation, it doesn't at all, and we know we've got four skills leaked for Mimi. So does it make sense for this to come on day one and not Mimi? And Mimi's whole thing in the show was being an undercover spy, right, at their school, and so this, it kind of makes sense, right, thematically, for Mimi to be a secret character that they won't tell us about before day one. So they can say, yeah, we'll have four characters on launch, and they're not lying, because the fifth one might be hiding and waiting. So I'll have to see if that does come true, I hope it does. If not, then I'm going to be a bit baffled if this comes without Mimi and then Mimi does come in, say, October. But upcoming updates will tell us as well, whenever we get those. Uh, Pierce is fine, but if it's the main box you are, then this is the one card you kind of don't want to pull. I, th I think it's not great. Of course, slapping on a drag, yes, can be great. I'd rather just get the destroy off and have another card in hand rather than this. And Rice Terra Secure is another Aqua, right? So this could be a sign, right? There's no more Aqua support in the box, right? We've not seen any other Aquas. So it would be weird for these two to be in the box, but we've seen them as three copies in the in the, all the previews, so it's a weird situation. We also had some new skills confirmed from my Japanese video. Unfortunately, they released every other video in English, apart from the one that really mattered, and so some of these may not be right. Like, it's been translated to best of my ability, using Google and asking people over in the Rushdoll discords. These skills here, you know, these are uh, Fine Noodle Boost, the Serve in the Beginning, the Magician Shuffle, these are all those skills with the Diamond Icon, and so these might be skills that any character can use, which would be really cool. And two of these are lifetime mission rewards. So that's going to be fun to kind of farm these out. And we know we're getting some skills via level ups as well that will have these diamond icons. So we'll see. Now there is one big card confirmed up here. Of course, we've got Curse of Dragon and Gaia, two very cool additions. We've got this Blue Falcon Tengu, who works with one of Gavin's skills. We've got the Silent Assailant, a very, very good card for Roman's deck, right? A very needed 1500 beta. But also, we've got Phoenix Dragon, one of the core pieces of Dragon Caster, core recursion, send a card from out to Graveyard, recycle a 5 or higher dragon in your graveyard to your hand, right? Get back to Gonic Slayer or Draggy Ass, this is so, so good. But, we've not seen it in the box, and I think this would be a super rare, or a rare, at minimum, and so this might be in Luke's level ups, as a hard kind of limited one card, not limited one on the balance, right, but like limited one in terms of how many you can get, that would make sense to me. 
So we'll have to wait and see, right? I'm not going to go for these skills now because I want to save them for tomorrow for when the characters do drop so we can know the English text and see them in their full context of the card releases. So I'll see you all tomorrow for a bunch of videos on Seven's World. It's going to be hectic and uh, I'm going to need some sleep. So, uh, so yeah, I'll see you all in the next Dawn's video tomorrow. See you then.